The Small Business Show, episode 189 for Wednesday, September 19th, 2018. Greetings, folks, and welcome to the Small Business Show here at businessshow.co, the show by, for, and about small business here in Durham, New Hampshire. I'm Dave Hamilton. And on the West Coast, I'm Shannon Jean. How are you, man? I'm doing all right, Shannon. How are you, my friend? Doing great. Doing great. Hey, I'm gonna. We're gonna jump right in, and not that I don't enjoy talking with you, but uh, <laughs> we're gonna jump right in today. We have an awesome guest uh, today, and you know, as our listeners know, I talk about it all the time. I'm a huge fan of PayPal, uh, super enabling uh, platform, and the ways that they help small businesses to succeed. I've been using them since like the early 2000s for all different stuff, different types of things on the various businesses. Um, one of the things I really respect that they do is they're just constantly innovating, embracing change like we talk about on the show all the time. And joining us today to talk about PayPal's innovation, new products, we're really happy to have Bill Reddy, PayPal's COO here. Welcome to the show, Bill. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, we really we really appreciate it. Um, and I, before we jump in to discuss you know, a couple of product things that we're talking about today, give us a brief snapshot of how you landed at PayPal. You know, uh, looking at your, your background, I know your parents were small business owners, and I, I'd really love to hear how that impacted your outlook on things and uh, your career path. Sure, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, before I was here at PayPal, the easiest way to describe me would have been as a serial entrepreneur, you know, having... Uh, helped to build five different startups. But uh, before that, I grew up, uh, you know, in a small business environment. My, my mom and dad were uh, small business owners, had a, a small uh, auto repair shop in, uh, uh, in small town Kentucky. And uh, I grew up uh, in that environment, started working there when I was about 10 years old um, and, and worked there all through uh, junior high and high school. And, uh, you know, the lesson I took from that, uh, I tell people, um, um, I'm probably an accidental entrepreneur because uh, after you know eight plus years of uh, you know being in a small business environment, I saw just how hard it really can be, um, and thought I'd never want to be in a small business uh, because I, just, I saw just <laughs> how hard it was. And uh, so you know, went off to college thinking you know I'd get a you know get a good job at a big company that was stable and didn't have all the trials and tribulations of, of what it meant to be a small business owner. And uh, quite by accident, ended up getting into the world of entrepreneurship, um, just because I was uh, I was working a couple jobs to put myself through college and. Uh, through a friend of a friend, met a, uh, a serial entrepreneur who had had a few successful businesses before that. Uh, as the dot com was just getting going, uh, I was a computer science major in undergrad, but very early on, I was still first year student. And uh, through a friend of a friend, um, met a serial entrepreneur uh, named Dana Bowers, and she was looking to go. Uh, she was in the midst of building. Uh, an online banking and payments company after having had a few successful companies prior to that and was uh, looking for engineers and, uh, you know, asked, Hey, can I help build that? And, uh, as a first year C computer science student, didn't really know how to do that. But all I thought about is, uh, I got to have one job instead of two or three and I said, Oh, sure. I can help you do that. And, uh, um, uh, was back into the world of entrepreneurship and, you know, as a dot com, that business, uh, IPO'd a little over a year later, uh, and I was then sort of hooked on, you know, what it meant to go be able to build something and see, you know, sort of your direct efforts uh, manifest in a business that serve customers and how quickly you can bring things to life. And so I quickly went from, you know, uh, growing up in the difficult world of, of, of small business and saying, wow, I don't know if this is, you know, worth uh, as much work as it is, to then getting to experience it more firsthand, uh, and seeing, you know, just how amazing, uh, it can be. Uh, and I think that sort of helped me understand why my mom and dad had been small business owners, uh, and, and still are. Um, and, and from that point forward have, uh, have been hooked on what it means to go build things. Um, and, and why I have loved both building companies and why I love what we do here at PayPal, uh, cause we get to help fuel, you know, nearly 20 million businesses around the world. Most of those are, you know, there aren't 20 million major retailers out there, you know, so most of those uh, nearly 20 million businesses are small businesses. And so, you know, I really love that we get to go enable people that are doing the things that, 
you know, my mom and dad were doing that I was doing as an entrepreneur. Um, it's, it's really gratifying. Yeah. You, you, yeah. you, you bring up a, an interesting thing, right? Because children of entrepreneurs, even successful entrepreneurs, uh, generally do exactly what you did, right? And veer a little bit away from that. Um, but if, and when they get roped in, you know, the, the bug is there, right? It's just the DNA. The, it's in your DNA. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's very interesting that that sort of manifested itself in, in exactly that way with you. Yep. Yeah, I think, I think that's right. I mean, I think it's the, the, the joys of being a small business owner, you get to experience them are tremendous. Um, you know, sometimes the burdens that you carry to get to that joy can, can be equally tremendous. Yeah. Um, and, and I think in, in, until you've gotten to experience both of those, uh, if you only look at one of them and you say, wow, is it, is it really worth all this work? But the, the, the benefits of it, the joys of it, um, you know, I think, uh, you know, far outweigh the work that you put into it. But, you know, as a teenager, uh, maybe you don't see it that way, but as I got to sort of experience it more as an adult, I, I understood, you know, why. Uh, why my folks had uh, had decided all those years that it was it was worth uh, it was worth that effort. It's worth that's it. That's great, yeah, totally. And I'm sure you're, I'm sure they're getting a great deal on their payment processing now. So that's, <laughs> I, hope, I hope I hope so anyway. Uh, so somebody knows somebody for sure. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. Well, you know, one of the reasons I fell in love with PayPal is it allowed us to get you know so much more control over our cash versus doing this you know merchant thing swiping you know slacks back and forth with uh, credit card machines now, so you guys just launched a new product called funds now and uh, you know we, we really want to learn about it tell us about funds now and why small business owners should be excited about it sure yeah i mean you know we you know, we do a lot to innovate around, you know, great new digital commerce products, ways to connect with consumers, how to sell online or on mobile in different places. So there's a bunch of that kind of stuff that that we do that is about, you know, growing your business, connecting to, to other customers. But it's also the case that, you know, we want to do things that help propel uh, the payments industry forward. Uh, and one of the things that uh, has, has been out there in the world of payments for quite some time and, you know, PayPal, you know, like others, you know, operate in the same way that, uh, you know, as digital payments have, have grown, most payments players hold funds for some period of time, days to weeks of funds that get held. And the, and the reason that's done is, um, uh, to really help mitigate against fraud, um, or, or financial risk. And you know, that's an understandable thing. Sure. Uh, at the same time, you know, having lived through what it means to, to be a small business owner, um, you know, if you have several days or weeks of your sales held up uh, with the payments processor, uh, you know, that's money not available to you to go, you know, pay your employees or buy inventory or, you know, put food on the table or whatever it is you need to do, you know, to right. open that second location, whatever it is you're trying to do, that's money not available to you. And so, you know, uh, funds now... Uh, for businesses that are in good standing with us, we're making we're making sales from customers available to those businesses instantaneously within seconds of the purchase being completed by the consumer. That money is available to the business. So instead of having to wait days or weeks to get their money, as had been the case with most payment processors across the industry for years and years, uh, we're saying we want to go set a much greater aspiration for the for the industry that uh, in a world of digital payments, particularly for a business in good standing, why shouldn't they have their money immediately available to them as soon as the customer completes the purchase? Um, had the per- had the customer paid in cash, that money would have been available to them right away. Why can't we make it the case that you know a digital payment is available just as quickly? And so that's the program uh, with funds now. As I say, as soon as a customer pays you. Uh, in a matter of seconds, that money is immediately available to you. You can go spend it with a PayPal merchant debit card. You can withdraw it to your bank account. You, 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 can, you can even do that instantaneously uh, with our um, uh, instant withdrawal product to, to your debit card. Uh, and so we really want to go raise the bar uh, and say that you know small businesses, particularly those that are doing good things, should expect to have access to their money right away so that uh, you know, instead of that you know, sitting uh, with some payment provider, that's in the hands of those small businesses that are going to have you know, great uses for it, whether it's, you know, uh, hiring more employees, selling more product, you know, opening the next location or, or just, you know, helping with, you know, their own expenses. We'd much rather see that money in the hands of those small businesses. So that's, that's really smart, right? I mean, and, and just to clarify, this isn't just 
if someone pays with their PayPal balance, right, this is if they pay with a credit card or whatever, it's available and free cash flow right away. You're not waiting on this. Is that right? That's exactly right. You know, one of the things we're doing with PayPal is that if you as a small business are using PayPal to accept payments, we're helping you to accept payments in all the ways customers want to pay. And that may be PayPal as a payment method. That could be credit or debit card. We're actually starting to connect in a lot of other forms of payment uh, as well. Uh, you know, we're helping a lot of small businesses go international. As you go international, there's lots of local payment methods where you go into places that people you know may not uh, have uh, debit, debit or credit cards. All those local payment methods we're helping to make available to small businesses as well. So we're saying, you know, however a customer wants to pay, we want to enable a small business to accept however a customer would want to pay. And regardless of how that customer paid, we want to get that money in the hands of the small business right away. Well, this is, I mean, this is great, right? Because, you know, with, especially with, you know, crypto kind of and blockchain becoming more and more popular and perhaps more and more acceptable, uh, traditional banks are fighting this like crazy and slowing down payments and that sort of thing. Whereas, you know, you're offering not just the same benefits as crypto, but but even faster and, of course, in a system that people already know and trust. So that's pretty good, man. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's one of the things, you know, we have uh, a big enabler of this, uh, and this is something our customers have known about us for years. You know, we're pretty distinctive in the payments industry in that we offer both buyer and seller protection. So fraud's a huge, huge issue in the world of payments. Um, you know, we, we have great... Uh, fraud systems, uh, great risk systems that allow us to go guarantee both sides of the transaction, saying to buyers, hey, when you pay with PayPal, you're going to be protected. You don't have to worry about, you know, do you know the business you're buying from? That creates trust from buyers. So more buyers will be willing to buy from you if you're an unknown business. So it's a great thing for the buyer. But then for sellers, we're saying, hey, you know, you're trying to sell online. You've got a customer coming to you from the other side of the, you know, on the other side of the globe or, you know, two states away or whatever, um, we're saying to those sellers, we're going to protect you as well. And this is another example of us saying, well, you know, having world-class industry leading uh, risk and fraud capabilities has allowed us to offer those types of protections to small businesses. Why can't we use those same abilities to get money to small businesses faster than anybody else would get it to them? And, and that's exactly what we're doing at Funds Now. That's, that's awesome. great. Does it matter? I mean, is it only for you know large sellers, uh, you know, on, on PayPal, or is it open to uh, you know what, what kind of prerequisites they have to have an account for a certain amount of time, something like that? Yeah, it's, it's available to businesses in good standing. We we okay. we've made it available to over a million uh, businesses already uh, in the U.S., U.K., and Australia. Um, you know the vast majority of those million would be small businesses. This is really a small business offering, you know, really big companies. They had the wherewithal to go negotiate, you know, faster payment times already. You know, sure. the, the people who really get caught up in uh, the sort of slower delivery of funds, uh, these sort of holds and reserves and, and things as they're called in the industry, it, it really is a small business problem. And so uh, we made it available to a million plus already. Uh, they need to be in good standing with us, so they need to have some selling history. But you know, once they've established themselves, have some positive selling history with us, uh, we see that you know customers aren't complaining about them. They're not engaging in fraudulent activity. Uh, we want to make money available to them right away, um, yeah. and that's not something that takes years of history to establish. That's something that takes you know a you know a you know relatively small amount of positive selling history, weeks or months of you know positive selling history, um, uh, and and we think you know we've got capabilities that allow us to go separate, you know, good actors from bad actors and say, yeah, we're keeping the fraudsters out. But if somebody is a, you know, a, a positive player with good intention and taking good care of their customers, uh, you know, we're going to get them their money as fast as possible. That's great. You know, the vetting that you guys do, uh, I mean, is, is awesome. We've done a lot of business in Asia. And one of the ways I really knew how to, uh, you know, get someone right away, whether they were a you know, good actor, bad actor. If if they said, "Oh, send me the funds in pay," you know, via my PayPal account, I would love it because I know well PayPal trusts these guys. Uh, you know, because there's so many times like, no, no, you need to wire transfer, you need to do this Western Union thing, and we would always say, get a PayPal account and get your business uh, established there, and uh, it works out great. I love it. Yeah, no, this is one of the things you know in in, a, in the world of the digital economy. There's all these opportunities available that. Uh, 
you know, didn't exist, you know, when, uh, you know, 25, 30 years ago, um, you know, when, and when I was sort of coming up in a small business, uh, if you wanted to go sell around the globe, you know, you needed massive physical infrastructure to do that. Um, or you needed, you know, huge, you know, distribution partners, you know, the sort of really hard deals to get versus now, you know, there are amazing platforms that can help you reach people all around the world. Um, whether those are social media platforms or just, you know, uh, you know, optimizing for search engine results, um, you know, uh, attracting people to your own site. There's so many different ways you can do that and, you know, interact with customers from around the world. But the big problem you then have is how do you deal with this issue of trust? And, and the issue of trust is on both sides is how does a buyer know that they can trust your business um, and that, you know, they're not going to have to worry about whether they really get the thing they're trying to buy from you, you know, when they're on the other side of the globe or, you know, two states away and they can't come knock on your door. How does the consumer know to trust that business? But then also how does the business know that they can go ship goods and, and not get scammed by a fraudster uh, to really let businesses, uh, particularly small businesses, capitalize on those opportunities of being able to sell to the globe. Um, you know, you really have to create trust on both sides of the transaction. And that's a huge focus for us. All right, Bill and Shannon, I would like to take a quick minute here. And talk about our two great sponsors for this episode. Our first sponsor is Gusto. You know, the uh, the thing is payroll and benefits are hard, especially for small businesses, right? You don't have time to be an expert in things like taxes and regulations and all of that stuff. And old school payroll providers just aren't built for the way you work today. Gusto is making payroll benefits and HR easy for small businesses. Modern tech does the heavy lifting, so it's easy to get things right. PC Mag and Fit Small Business have called Gusto the best payroll for small businesses, and there's a reason for it. Gusto makes payroll a breeze and saves you time. They say that uh, three quarters of their customers spend less than five minutes to run payroll, and four out of five reduce errors after switching to Gusto. That's a huge thing. You don't want to make mistakes on your payroll. If you don't believe it, just Google them. People love Gusto. How often have you heard that about your payroll provider? Most businesses don't have an HR expert, but you don't need one to use Gusto. They've got great software and great service, and you can focus on your business, not your payroll and paperwork. So to help support the small business show, Gusto is offering you, our listeners, an exclusive limited time deal. Sign up today and you'll get three months free once you run your first payroll. Just go to gusto.com slash SBS. Again, gusto.com slash SBS. And our sincere thanks to Gusto for sponsoring this episode. Our second sponsor for today is Text Expander. Talk about saving time. Man, Text Expander is just one of those things that I can't live without. I, I, I was on my laptop last night going through doing some work prepping for the show. And I went and realized I had accidentally quit Text Expander. And the way I realized this, it didn't take very long. I went to employ one of my shortcuts, right? I went to, I was an actually answering an email and I wanted to make sure I had my cell phone number in there. So I typed, as I always do, C603 because my cell phone is uh, from the 603 area code here in New Hampshire. And C is, of course, for cell. I know I should probably use M because they're not technically cell phones, but really that's okay. So anyway, I typed C603 and C603 stayed on my screen. Not good. I realized I had quit a bunch of apps and in my haste, I had quit text expander. Thankfully, a quick tap of the text expander icon in my dock and all was remedied. Now my shortcuts worked, but that's not the only thing you can do with these shortcuts. In fact, that's just scratching the surface. You can do all kinds of cool things, including creating uh, forms, right? So when you trigger a shortcut, it can build like a whole email text for you, but make sure that you're typing in the person's name and perhaps the product that you are replying to them about. And maybe, you, you know, you want to paste in their order number. Well, if you've got it on your clipboard, text expander can automatically integrate that. Like I build for our show, I build Amazon affiliate links. 
when we, you know, mention a book or whatever, because if you buy it, why not? We should get a little kickback. Well, I copy the product ID out of the URL and then I type comma SBS AMA. Boom. It builds the affiliate link. I don't have to think about how it is. I've already done it and it's always right. So you can do this too. All you need to do is visit textexpander.com slash podcast. Yes, that's textexpander.com slash podcast. You can take it from there. Our thanks to the folks at Smile and Text Expander for sponsoring this episode. All right, Shannon, what do you have next on the list for Bill? Let's jump to a different topic for for a moment. We, one of the questions we ask everybody that comes on the show is, uh, you know, we, we we're big fans of mistakes, and I'm making air quotes here. Uh, you know, your best mistakes that taught that teach us some really invaluable lessons, and we've had some incredible answers over the you know last few years. It, do you have a, a best mistake, if you will, that you could you know perhaps early on in your business career? I'm sure you don't make any mistakes now anymore, especially with good people around you <laughs> that I that I've met in the last couple of days. But you know some that you could share with our listeners to be like, man, this, this one really stuck with me. Well, I, I, um, I've, I've, I've had plenty. <laughs> I think the, uh, you know, any, any good small business owner that thrives, uh, any good entrepreneur that thrives, uh, you know, figures out how to, you know, rapidly learn from mistakes and, and, and iterate the, on those knowing you're going to make, you know, more mistakes, but you, you quickly get better. Um, you know, a first really big one for me, um, you know, as a, going back to working on my, you know, working for my parents in a small business, I had, uh, uh, I was, I was fixing someone's car for them, fixing someone's truck, um, is a farmer's truck. You know, this is small town, Kentucky, um, working on a farmer's truck and, uh, I had screwed up uh, and he was supposed to get it back that day. And it was gonna, and because of the mistake I had made, it was going to be another couple days before he got his truck. And, uh, my, my parents both said to me, you know, he, he, he comes in and, you know, he's not feeling any sympathy for, you know, Hey, here's some teenager working on your car. Who's you know scared to death. He's thinking, Hey, this is my livelihood. I'm not going to have my truck that I need for my livelihood. And, you know, my parents, instead of them going explaining what had happened, they said to me like, Hey, you go tell them what you did and what you're going to do to make it right. Um, and having to go look a customer in the eye and explain, um, you know, that you had, you had made a mistake that caused them harm. Uh, and that, uh, you know, it was going to be up to you to do something to make it right. You know, that has stuck with me ever since. And so I think a lot of technology companies, you start to get to millions and millions of customers and the customer becomes this really abstract thing. Um, but I think that experience of, you know, literally having to look a customer in the eye and know that, you know, your actions have consequences for them has been something that's burned in my brain. Um, and for things like what we're doing with, you know, trying to get people their money faster, you know, the things I think about, you know, we've got, you know, we've got nearly 20 million businesses on our platform. The things I think about, I was like, Oh, if we didn't get somebody their money, like what did that mean for them? You know, did it make it so that they couldn't get their payroll out? Did it make it so they couldn't, you know, get the next batch of inventory? It's like all those consequences. But I think that stuff's burned in my brain from having to have that very personal, very tangible experience of go look at customer directly in the eye and, you know, explain to them, uh, you know, what you did and what you're going to have to do to make it right. That's that's stuck with me ever since. Yeah, that's we, we always fantastic. say here, every business is the customer service business. And, and the sooner entrepreneurs learn that, the more successful you'll be. Totally. Yeah. 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 It's, it's actually a harder lesson now. I think you get so many digital businesses that don't have to go through that experience of like looking the customer in the eye and the customer is this abstract thing. And, that's a good you know, point. people think about like, oh, yeah, you know, it's, uh, you know, I, I succeeded, you know, uh, 98 percent of my uh, you know, 90% of the time my product succeeds. Well, you, know, you start to have millions of customers like that other 2%, like, Oh, that's a whole, that's a whole major U S city that you didn't serve. Well, you know, if you miss yeah. it on two, yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, they, they that's, a, that's a really good point. I hadn't thought about the impact of that for someone who's never had a face to face business. Right. That's, yeah, that's yep. interesting. Yeah. I, I, I think you're probably very, very right. You're onto something with that. Yeah. And remind me, I'll give you the, the phone number of my 16-year-old son so you can have that accountability <laughs> call <with him. laughs> after the show. <laughs> it, it, was, it, was a, it was a tough lesson to learn, but uh, it, was, it was a very good lesson to learn. Yeah, yeah that's killer. So in, in prepping for the show here, one of the quotes that kind of stuck out of me when I was reading, you know, was uh, we're, we're PayPal, you know, we view ourselves as a democratizer of access to the digital economy. It, 
expand on that for me. Explain why that's important to to PayPal and and I know important to you as well. Yeah, I mean, you know, if you look at the the rise of e-commerce, you know, much more of the benefits of uh, e-commerce have, have gone to some of the you know the largest players out there. And you know, you, you flip on the news and you see this stuff every day now that you see major retailers struggling, closing store locations. You know, major retailers that you know as a small business owner you would have thought of as some of the most powerful players, you know, 20 years ago, they're struggling to compete against some of the biggest e-commerce players out there. And, you know, that has impacts for small business owners as well. You know, that, uh, you know, if you're trying to, you know, compete with, you know, juggernauts, uh, how do you do that? And, you know, one of the things we think about is, you know, how we can take the capabilities of the largest e-commerce players in the world and put that, th- put that in the hands of every small business owner, every entrepreneur, every retailer out there. What if they could have those capabilities at their fingertips so that, you know, the, you know, the, you know, the success of their business is in their hands, you know, based on what they do to serve customers. What's the, you know, how unique is their offering? But it's not about, well, did you already have hundreds of millions of of customers. Uh, and if you didn't, then you're not going to be able to compete. Well, you know, that's, you know, that's not going to lead to a, you know, vibrant, thriving ecosystem of many, many players, which is, you know, I think what this, you know, uh, you know, what our economy here has always been about, uh, what much of the economy around the world has been about, you know, small businesses account for, uh, more than half the job growth in the United States, right? Like, uh, you know, small businesses really are the lifeblood of, of our economy. And, you know, we want to make sure that they're getting really, really easy access, really, uh, uh, really simple access to the very best digital commerce tools. So that they're not left sitting on the sidelines, watching only the biggest players get to benefit from the rise of e-commerce from the rise of mobile commerce, uh, from the benefit of, you know, uh, consumers around the globe being able to buy from businesses anywhere else around the globe. Uh, that shouldn't be something that, you know, those benefits only accrue to the big juggernauts that should, you know, be available to anybody who's, you know, got a great idea or, uh, has a service offering they want to provide. We want to go put the ability to connect, you know, with our 250 million plus users in the hands of, uh, you know, businesses all around the world. We want that ability to go sell everywhere, uh, in their hands. We want, you know, great fraud detection, uh, in all their hands. And and we think if they have that, then that can allow, you know, many, many more businesses to thrive. And so I think it's not just something that's important to our business model. We think it's something that's, that's quite important to, you know, the U S economy to the world economy, given how much small businesses drive job growth and, and, and innovation. And, and, you know, that is exactly what PayPal's secret sauce is. I always make the comment when people ask me, well, what should I, who should I use? What merchant processor processor? And I always say, you know, no one else ever calls me to ask me how my business works other than PayPal. Nobody invites me to conferences. Nobody, you know, wants to watch me interact and how to use the APIs. And and you guys have done that for us for years. And we're, we're nobody, you know, we were little small businesses. I mean, uh, and, and so I, I commend you guys on that. And, and you've been able to keep that as you've gotten, you know, massively uh, large and that is it's it's really authentic and i love it well thanks thanks for sharing that it does uh, it matters a lot to us and uh we try to listen closely we don't always get it right we <laughs> right you know, our own mistakes and so part of what we're listening closely for is you know the positive feedback like you just gave but we're also listening closely to uh you know when we don't get it right uh so that we yeah. you know go go back into the go back into the lab and get to work on you know how, how we go fix uh uh you know if we, if we created issues for folks yeah, it's, it's great. It's, it's true. I'll, I'll echo Shannon's thoughts. You know, you guys, you're not a faceless entity over there, which which right. it, it, it would be a a fair assumption given your size and all of, you know, and, and what you do, you know, just like we talked about, you know, it's this online business, very easy to detach from customers. You folks have always gone the other direction and really focused on customers. And it it it, it shocked me, frankly, the first time I, I encountered it there. So, yeah, thank you. 
Yeah. Well, stuff. So, yeah. So, so let's talk. So we're talking about small business and, you know, you guys focus so much on, on supporting us and, you know, everything from like the small uh, merchant advisory board that, you know, you get a small business owners connected to politicians to try to impact, you know, policy in our favor uh, to your business loans. I mean, I've borrowed money from you guys. It's great. Uh, you know, do you, are small businesses really the best driver of growth for PayPal or is it a, a you know, a fair mix of of, you know, small business and P2P? Um, you know, it's, uh, small businesses are very much, you know, at the core of what we do without question. Um, that said, you know, the, one of the biggest differentiators we have for those small businesses, unlike other payment players, you know, other payment players will help you process a credit card. Um, you know, there's, there's lots of ways you can go do that. Uh, what we do that's very different than others is, you know, I'm sure you all have experienced is the fact that we've got 250 million plus users that we can enable with, you know, very simple uh, checkout experiences that are going to trust that, you know, when they see PayPal on your site uh, or when they see that you're accepting PayPal, they know they can buy with confidence and that they're going to be covered and protected and, that, you know, you know, they're not going to have to worry about whether you're a reputable business or not. Um, you know, that consumer side of our business is a big part of what enables us to serve small businesses in ways that other payment players cannot. And so we we focus very much on serving both consumers and businesses really well because our businesses uh, our small business customers want to work with us because we can bring them 250 million uh, consumers. Uh, our consumers work with us, though, because they know we're going to get them to all the best places to go buy. Um, and so it really is a two sided platform. And we we're always working to make sure that we're keeping both sides of that two sided platform happy because each side of the platform wants to be there because the other side is there. Uh, and, and so both are, are, are huge areas of focus for us. And our, you know, a big area of focus for us, too, is all the ways that we bring those two sides together, you know, where buyers and sellers meet, where we create trust between buyers and sellers, where we can create, you know, the ability for more shoppers to turn into buyers. Um, you know, those things where the, the buyers and sellers meet one another uh, is a huge area of focus uh, for us. Cause that's a place where we think we really stand apart from anything else out in the ecosystem. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Very cool. So let, let me, we'll pick your brain here for a minute. You know, as someone who's had a lot of experience, you know, scaling, it's something I've always struggled with, you know, how do you, how do you really scale this business or is it, is it scalable, you know, from a small startup to something larger, uh, you know, we've got thousands of small business owners that listen to the show. Uh, you know, it, it is, do you have a, a single tip that you can leave, you know, in, in just a few minutes, a uh, piece of advice to everyone that, you know, how do you scale your business or maybe even how to find it if it's scalable at all? Yeah. I mean, I think, um, you know, it could go on forever about sort of different lessons learned on that. But I think yeah. a lot of the conventional wisdom on scaling a business is like, you got to get to repeatable process. You got to get to repeatable process and figuring out like, do your existing processes scale up or not? Or are you still, you know, doing something that really is, you know, reliant upon like an individual or a few individuals. And so that's the conventional wisdom and it's conventional wisdom because there's a lot of truth to it. Um, that, yeah, if you're going to scale, you do need to have repeatable process. But the thing I would say that I think a lot of folks, you know, can sometimes over rotate on. And I think this will this will ring true for just about every small business owner. But, um, you know, the people that you put in that process matter tremendously. I think too many people as they're scaling their business sometimes make the mistake of letting the process rule the day versus realizing that, you know, making sure you've got people in that business that are just as passionate about that business as you are and have just as much of a feeling of ownership and wanting to take care of the customer as you do, that's going to matter from, you know, the time you start your business all the way up to, you know, uh, if you if you get to a business that's operating in countries around the world, getting people in that business that are as maniacal about serving customers well and have the same passion that you do about whatever it is that you do, uh, that's going to matter no matter what size you are. And if you do that plus have repeatable process, you're going to have an amazing business. If you just get repeatable process, I think that's going to get to, you know, you're making comments earlier about like, Hey, so many businesses can seem a little, 
uh, you know, a little nameless and faceless and, you know, maybe soulless. Well, some, sometimes that is because people focus so much on like, did we get the repeatable process? And along the way, you lose all the amazingly passionate people that are the ones that make the difference. And, and yeah, you need that repeatability, but you also need amazing people within it. And I think that probably sounds like an obvious thing, but so many people lose that along the way that I think it's worth calling out that, uh, uh, that, that'll, that'll, That'll be intuitive for a small business owner, but they'll get lots of advice to say, get to that repeatable process. Don't lose the amazing people that make the difference uh, as you go build that stuff out. Yeah, that's that's great. And I don't think it's that obvious. So I think that's really a good, good, a good yeah. tip because, yeah. you know, wrapping it on a from on a human level, which seems to be what everybody often oftentimes wants to get away from to, to scale. I think that's fantastic. That's very cool. So. You know, we talked a lot about funds now and getting access to your cash right away, which I think is awesome. I know there's a bunch of other PayPal products that our listeners would benefit from learning about that we didn't get a chance to talk to today. So that means you have to come back on the show at some point. But where's the best place for them to, to visit online where they can see, you know, w- what PayPal can do for me and what's available to help my small business? Yeah, we, we try to make it pretty easy. You can go to paypal.com, you know, click on uh, the business section of uh, paypal.com and you'll see there, you know, things that range from, you know, the new PayPal checkout. So you can easily start accepting payments online to PayPal working capital, where we'll lend money to small businesses who might not otherwise have been able to get a uh, small business loan to things like, you know, invoicing, um, you know, or how to go, you know, connect with customers around the world. Uh, all those things are available there. Um, and, uh, you know, try to make that, you know, really easy for uh, small businesses to get access to. That's perfect. Well, Bill, thank you so much for coming on the small business show today. You know, we love what you guys have done, uh, as you've grown, you know, you've helped our businesses and enriched our business and our personal life, you know, without, I always tell people without PayPal, uh, I wouldn't be sitting here talking today. So, uh, we, we love having you come on. Thank you very much. Well, thanks for, thanks for having me on and, uh, appreciate the feedback. It means a lot. Yeah. Uh, awesome. Absolutely. Thanks. Uh, thanks for listening, folks. Thanks uh, for coming on the show, Bill. This has truly been great. And uh, you can find us at businessshow.co. You can find Bill at paypal.com, as he said. Keep living that charmed life. That's what we like to say here, Bill. And we wish that for you as well. Thanks so much. Thanks.